Hello again, fellow podcaster, and welcome back to Pod Theory. I'm your host, Jason Sircone, and today on episode 128 of Pod Theory, myself and Travis Brown are going to debunk the myth that you don't have enough time in your day to do a podcast. I guarantee that you do. You know why? Because each and every one of us has the exact same amount of time in our day. It's all about how you manage your time. And it's all about how you put your podcast together and utilize the time that's available to you to create something that's awesome that the world's going to love. Episode 128 of Pod Theory Season 2 lies ahead. Here we go. Welcome back to Pod Theory Season 2. This is Episode 128. I am joined by the great Travis Brown of Poddex. What's up, Travis? The great Travis Brown. Thank you so much. Will you write that on my LinkedIn page, please? I may. These <laughs> intros are going to keep escalating as we go episode to episode. So as people climb through this season, as long as they're listening in succession, you're just going to keep getting better and better, my friend. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the ride. Thank you. All right. So this is season two, all about myths and misconceptions in the podcasting world. And let's talk about the fact that some people just don't think they have enough time to podcast. Yeah, t- time is a fixed asset, right? Yes, it we is. We talked about money, and you can get more money, but there's no way for you to borrow time. There's no way for you to get back time. There's no way to produce more time. We're on a level playing field here. So if you see somebody who's achieving great things, they have the exact same amount of time in the bank as you do. That's exactly right, because there are some very successful podcasts out there And they have the exact same amount of time in their day to create that content as you do. That leads me to ask the question of you, Travis, why do podcasters feel they lack the time to create quality content? So I think there's a few reasons. So the first reason I would say is that they are maybe doing things that aren't serving them or they're spending too much time creating content because they haven't created efficiencies in their workflow. So if it takes you two hours to record a podcast and then three hours to edit it and then another hour to make all the assets to promote it, are you really using those six hours efficiently? Or do you, or is there opportunity for you to get quicker or maybe just, I don't want to say dumb down the process, but maybe you've overcomplicated the medium of podcasting. So a couple of ways that I encourage people to get more efficient is with a little bit of planning, you know, old Abe Lincoln, our, our favorite influencer said that if he had, you know, an hour to chop down a tree, he'd sharpen that, that ax for 45 minutes, right? Which is making your job easier on the back end. So if you're going into an episode and you're just like, I'll just wing it, you're gonna have a hard time because you're going to have a hard time coming up with the content. And then you're gonna have a harder time editing it because it's not going to be what you want. So spend a little time making an outline, a skeleton of your episode to keep yourself on track and your editing process becomes much quicker. And I think editing is probably the biggest pain point when it comes to time. And that just comes down to, you're not expected to be an audio engineer as a podcaster. You plugged in a mic, you talked into it. Now you have to learn EQ, compression, all this other stuff. The fastest way to make your podcast faster, for lack of a better term, is to take a couple steps. So first, Lock in your settings. So your microphone is set to a certain level. Just make sure it's always at that level. And learn some key commands in your digital audio workstation. Doesn't matter which one, they're all the same. But they all have key commands that are let you do things faster than clicking around. So learn those key commands for cut audio or copy or fade or whatever you're doing. And also give yourself a little bit of grace. If you're new in podcasting and it's taking you a long time, you will get better. I don't know anybody who jumped on a bike the first time and just rode off into the sunset. You fall down a couple of times, you skin your knee, you get better and better. I think that's probably efficiency or overcomplicating like what they actually need in the podcast, or maybe their podcast is just too long. That's bingo. That's the one that I always, that's the first question I ask when someone says that to me about lack of time. How long are your episodes? Chances are, they're too long. I mean, and, and, and that's a very broad statement because you're telling me you don't have enough time to podcast. That means your episodes are too long, no matter what it is. 
you need to find a way to condense some time down. Now, I think everything that you said is perfect because you have to have some planning involved because if you only have two hours to dedicate to your podcast per week and you're producing an hour and a half long recording, you know that you're not going to be able to pull off everything else in half an hour. That's impossible. You can't edit and produce assets and market, promote, and do any type of follow-ups with your guests that you need to do in that time span. So you have to automatically go to, okay, I have two hours. My show should be anywhere between... 20 to 30 minutes at a maximum. That's going to give me time to edit it down. I can create the promotional assets. I can communicate with the guests to help get their, their buy-in for promotion, whatever you need to do. You have to have that time. So if you're not planning it accordingly, then you're, you're, you're going to set yourself up for failure. And personally, and again, I'll just throw my own personal takes on it. Those long two to three hour episodes are sometimes hard to consume because we just don't have that kind of time in our lives because a lot of people are listening to podcasts at the gym or on a commute or while they're walking the dog at night. And that any of those activities typically don't last two to three hours. So it all comes down to identifying your ideal listener and what they would want to consume. So if you're the type, if your listener is the type of person that has three hours to kill with a podcast and you have the time to produce it, okay. But I go right back to the theme of this show or this episode, people are saying they don't have enough time to podcast. So I would say step one is to look at what, how long the episodes you're producing are. And if you're in those beginning stages, look at how much time you have to dedicate to the entire production of your show, and then build your episode times based around that. I love that. Yeah, that's a great point. Do I have permission to swear on this podcast? You absolutely can swear, okay. my friend. We permission are adults here. Great. So the second reason I think people don't have enough time is because they bullshit themselves about how they spend their time. And if you can sit down and tell me that you just binged, you know, two seasons of Breaking Bad and, you know, you're going to a concert and you're, you know, playing video games and all this stuff, you have time. You choose how you spend it. So... Me personally, I don't really watch TV. I don't play video games. I make the sacrifices it takes to create all the content that I want. So I make time to do the things I want to do. And we all make time for what we want. Yes, there are days we get you know busy and things fall between the cracks and we may not, quote, have time for them. But you really have to be self-aware and say, listen, how am I really spending my time? Because it shouldn't take, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be in the position to where you can't create something weekly because you don't have enough time. I have empathy for those who have a full-time job. I've had a full-time job as a podcaster and you wake up early or you stay up late and you make it happen, yeah. but you don't watch 20 episodes of whatever the latest show that everyone's talking about. You have to have some general discipline and decide what's important to me. Is it important to me to make this podcast or is it important to me to watch Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones or whatever the thing is that's going to take up an hour of your life and then you talk about it for another half an hour after the episode? So you choose where you spend your time. Are you choosing wisely is the question I want to ask you, the listener. What is a lack of time at its core definition? It's an excuse, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that goes 100% with what you're saying is that people will bullshit themselves. They will make excuses until they're blue in the face about why they can't accomplish something. And 99 times out of a hundred, it's some external force that isn't actually them. And to me, that is the prime definition that drives excuse making is that we're pointing the finger and we're blaming somebody else. When in reality, what we need to do is look in the mirror and evaluate how we're spending the time that we have. Because like I said, at the top of the show, we, every single one of us has the exact same amount of minutes and seconds in the day. And there are people doing some extraordinary things each and every day. I guarantee you those people are not watching two or three hours of breaking bad. They're not watching whatever the hottest new documentary that pops out on Netflix. And now I'm going to say this, there's nothing wrong with doing that. If that's how you wind down and you enjoy kicking back with the family or just on your own 
and watching a good documentary. I just watched the Bob Ross documentary on Netflix as we oh, see. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It was so good. I highly recommend it. And here we on the subject of recommendability, go watch the Bob Ross documentary on Netflix. But it was excellent. But that was how I chose to spend my time because I knew I was going to be entertained by that. But all my work was done. I set myself up to where I could have that time to enjoy myself and take in something good. So don't get overwhelmed and think that, oh my God, I have to spend all my time on this or else it's not going to be successful. That's not the point that either of us are, t- are driving at. You have to look at what you have in front of you and make it important enough that you'll spend the right amount of time to make it good and not make an excuse that says, I don't have time for this. And if I, if I only had a certain amount of hours, I could make this better because that's not the case. You have to look at yourself first and then you can build from there. Yeah, then there's the other side of the spectrum. <clears throat> there's the perfectionist who is going to spend every waking moment making this episode that they're putting out absolutely perfect. No breathing, no external noise, no, you know, they're going to spend, they're going to over edit their podcast to make this thing perfect. And I think that that's also a time deficiency is, yes, you should put out something that you're incredibly proud of. But if you're spending too much time because you're trying to make it perfect, you know, perfection doesn't exist. And perfection, in my opinion, is boring. Some of the, I've mentioned this before on my podcast, some of the coolest things that have ever happened are happy accidents. And, you know, Bob Ross, happy accidents, right? Dude. Oops, I splashed some paint over here. Let's just turn that into some trees. All right. He didn't start the canvas over. He didn't erase everything or paint over it. It's a happy accident. The Beatles, we talked about the Beatles. You know, uh, an engineer put the tape reel on backwards and it plays backwards when you do that. And John Lennon heard it and said, let me hear that again. And the guy was like, I'm so sorry. No, no, let me hear it again. And then he demanded to hear everything he did backwards, which played into some of their cool psychedelic sound that they created. You know, so don't make your podcast perfect is my advice because people aren't listening to it like you are. They're not putting you under the microscope. People say, oh, I hate my voice. I d-. People don't hear you like you hear you. It's physically impossible because you're in your head. You don't, you're not hearing yourself the way other people hear or perceive you. So I right. challenge people to lose perfectionism. Yeah, and I think where a lot of people get hung up, and I, I'll tell a story because I was the perfect example of this, and this was way back when I first started podcasting, and I really hadn't developed any editing skills. I got 15 minutes into a recording and I started to flub a sentence, not realizing that, well, when I get into post-production, I can just edit all of this out and get to the part that was good. I was so green and, and, and so fixed on perfection that after 15 minutes of what was a good podcast, I got all pissed off and I ended up deleting it and starting over. Now these are, that, that was a mistake that I made at the beginning. And I'm sure People out there that are listening to this episode today may have made a similar mistake, but I think that what we can all make peace with is that we're all going to make mistakes as we do this. There are going to be mistakes that are going to make the actual release of the episode because they couldn't be edited out. Sure. And that's okay because there is no such thing as a perfect podcast. No matter how hard you try, there's going to be something that's going to be off. And even if your eyes look at it and say, this is flawless, there couldn't be a thing wrong with this, someone else may hear something like, oh, I just caught a little audio clip or Mm -hmm. something, you know, like something that may have been overlooked. So if you just put it out of your head that it has to be perfect, you're going to save yourself some time, you're going to save yourself a lot of effort, and you're going to save yourself a lot of undue frustration because it's not necessary to think on that level. It's necessary to think that the value that is within this episode is going to be something that impacts my audience members. That's it. You're going to put yourself in a much better position to do that. And I think that will help you get over this time hurdle that you don't have enough time when you start thinking about the fact that what you're producing is impacting lives. It's impacting people that listen to it. It may not be a big dire change in someone's life, but if they're entertained by what you do, you're robbing them of that entertainment. If you say, I don't have time to make an episode this week because yeah. go back. I want to watch breaking bad. Yeah. You know, like that, that to me, that's where it all lives is just making sure that the value is there, that perfection is unattainable to quote tin cup and 
when you start thinking on those levels, you make a better podcast at the end of the day. So let's talk about how long a podcast should be, because I think that there's a lot of people out there that ask this question very often, how long should my podcast be? And the answer to that question is there is no one size fits all time. You, you're, this isn't going on TV. You don't have to hit the, the, the marks to make sure that your sitcom makes the commercials and all that. Your podcast should be as long as it takes you to get the information across. Now, yes, there are long form conversations, so they can be longer, or you could potentially make short form content. Jason, what are your thoughts on short form content? Well, if you go back and listen to season one of Pod Theory, I think you'll get the answer to that question. I love it. The original concept behind this podcast was to do short form episodes five days a week. And that was how it originally started. So I would do five to 10 minute episodes Monday through Friday. And when I started it and when I came up with the concept, we were in the I don't know, maybe the heat of the pandemic, if that's a way to say it, it was in the very, it was in September of 2020. So we were still in a time where Mm -hmm. we were probably past some of the, the most worst times, but we were nowhere near the the light at the end of the tunnel. There was still a lot in front of us with that. We were just looking at with uncertainty. So my thought was instead of trying to, to find guests or Obviously, I mean, everything would be done remotely at this point. So instead of that, I'm going to just focus on this the smaller micro content and put out value every day. And that's what I ran with. And what I discovered as I started reaching out to other podcasters and having conversations is like, I miss this element. I think I want to do more of that on the show, which is why I shifted and we are now doing the format that people are hearing today. Mm-hmm. But to answer your question, I think it's a great way to communicate. And I think it's it's another one of those things that gets people past this arbitrary number of podcast length. I have to have a half hour show or else. This isn't dominoes. There's no 30 minutes or less. There's no 30 minutes or more. Avoid the noid. <laughs> I think where we're at is that we want to make sure that we're getting as much value packed in to our podcast. And I feel that that is somehow tied to a time. That's not the case because you could get your point across in five minutes. You may be able to get your point across in 30. The point is that there's no set time that you have to hit. Get the value out there. Focus on that and just let the time fall where it may. And I know I mentioned this when we had our conversation back on 125. I had a college professor that told us, I'm not going to give you guys an assignment where you have to give me 750 words to pass this, this paper or this essay. If you can get your point across to me in two paragraphs, as long as the point is made, you get an A. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, I can make that happen. It wasn't even that it was like, oh, I can bullshit two paragraphs and make this short. No, I could make my point in that shorter time frame, And then get my A from it versus, well, I got to try to put in a filler word here and a filler word there. And that's what happens when you're trying to create this certain length podcast as you start putting in filler that doesn't belong, or you start rambling and blah, 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 blah. Kind of like I'm doing right now, but I'm going to bring it back to the point. (laughs) Notice I can catch myself at these, this, this juncture, but if you keep your mindset there, it's going to make for a much better production and your listener is going to get better value from you at the end of the day. Very well said. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of fluff in podcasts. I think there's a lot of extra stuff stuck in to make something a certain length. And that's all the stuff that can be removed. If you can think about a subtractive creator mindset, like, does this really drive home the point? And cut it out. Uh, Just because you record it doesn't mean it has to go on the show. Right. So, you know, start to think about how you can trim down. I, I like to think about content as like a statue, right? You start with this big block of rock and then you start chiseling things away to expose the thing that you want people to see. So can you take that mindset into podcasting? And if you're making shorter form episodes, you're also having empathy. I think empathy is the theme of a lot of these episodes of like, yeah. does your listener need to listen to an hour and a half to get the point? No. You know, can you put it in 12 minutes? Again, we talked about micro courses. People don't want to buy 80 hours of video. 
Do they want to listen to an hour and a half to, to get to you making the point that they're there? Because with podcasting, you get one shot. It's the title. And if you say how to do this, but it takes you an hour and a half to get there, you're going to lose people all day long. So, and, Well, and to speak to that, it's funny the mentality we have because we spoke about this back on episode 127 about YouTube videos. If you're, if you're, you need to unclog your toilet and you find three videos, one's three minutes, one's seven, one's nine, the majority of people are going to go for the three minute video, right? Yep. So why with podcasts, are we so scared to put something out there that's three minutes if it gets to the point? Why do we feel that we need to get, oh, well, I need to get at least 30 minutes out there. I need to at least get 40 minutes out there. Like, no, there's no right answer. It's just in how you deliver the message that you want to deliver when you put that content out. Yeah, there's no association with length being tied to value. Right, exactly. You know, that's why, I mean, that's not why pop songs are three minutes. Pop songs are three minutes because it was all that would fit on the actual record. But if you compare it to music, which is something I like to do, is, you know, Inagata De Vida is a 30-minute song. It's a great song, but I can listen to a two-minute pop song that makes me feel the same way. And I'm on with my day. So yeah. neither one is more valuable because of their length. It's the content in that strategy. And, you know, I use Gary Vee as an example a lot. I don't like to use him as an example because he's an outlier and I don't like people comparing themselves to him. But like, he's the master of short form content. And if you listen to some of his stuff, it sounds like garbage. It sounds, it's, he's on Apple earbuds in the back of a car, in New York City. But his message is so impactful that you'd listen to that form. Like if somebody told you, I'm going to play you the meaning of life and it's three minutes long, but there's all this like static and stuff, you would sit there and really focus in and try to listen to it because it's an impactful thing to learn. So over analyzing, spending too much time editing, perfecting, perfect your message and perfect the way you deliver it. And don't fluff it up. Don't stick a bunch of extra stuff in because you think because podcaster Y has a 45 minute podcast, my podcast has to be 45 minutes. We're, we don't have a timer on this. We're going to go until it takes us to get you to the point where you realize that you do have enough time. You're just choosing. So let's give them like three quick reminders of how they can get more time well, back in their be, lives to be a content creator. Well, before we transition, I want to say that one of the initial things that you can do in the very beginning when you're planning out your podcast, or even if you're taking strides to improve your podcast and cut back your time is identify what your target listener is looking for. If you're doing a podcast where your target listener has a 30 minute workout in the morning, and that's when they're going to consume your show, make sure you're serving them something that they can consume in that 30 minute period. If they have a 45 minute commute, then you've got a little extra time to play with. But if you know what your ideal listener is looking for, then you know how to craft a, a ballpark figure on your show. Don't try to hit exactly because that's just silly and, and useless. But if you could stay within that time frame, you know, if you've got 45 minutes and you come in with a 20 minute show, you serve your purpose because they're going to be able to consume your value and consume, and consume your message in that allotted time that they have. And if they love what you have to say, maybe they, you know, I've, I've still got 25 minutes on this commute. I'm going to go listen to another episode. So start thinking of it on that level. And now you're going to get them exploring your catalog versus just listening to your most current release. So love that. Leave them wanting more. Leave absolutely. your audience craving more of your content. I think in regards to ways that you can look at the time that you're spending as I said, evaluate your episode time as it stands right now. If you're an existing show and you feel like your shows are too long and it's just sucking the energy out of everything you do with podcasting, take some time to backtrack and look at how you can shorten that up and get it into a more manageable space that's going to make you excited to create that episode every week or every other week versus something that's like, oh man, I got two hours of editing in front of me because I just did this hour and a half show, blah, blah, blah. Like these are the things that eventually make people pod fade. So keep that front of mind. What's one that you've got? Uh, creator time. So I block creator time on my calendar where it's just, it's a non-negotiable. If somebody wants to hang out or stop by or ask me to do something, if it's during creator time, 
The answer is no, because it's not that I don't want to hang out with you, but this time is sacred to me and I keep it for myself to create. And I think that by creating some boundaries, there's always going to be another party or another TV show or another thing happening, but that stuff's all going to be there forever. So you have to strategically give yourself creator time and just learn how to say no to things that aren't going to serve that creator time for you. I love it. And I think another great step that, that anybody listening to this can take is to batch their content. You know, Travis and I didn't get together 11 different times to put together season two of pod theory. We scheduled a couple jam sessions and we're just rocking out as much content as we can possibly get recorded in that two to three hour window that we have. I love recording this way. I think it's much better and much more efficient to take a two hour block and, and get as much done as you can versus trying to do something every week. Because when you do that, you put yourself in a position to where you're giving yourself a deadline. And sometimes deadlines aren't fun. And that sucks the fun, which is one of the biggest pillars of podcasting that we all need to keep in front of us. It sucks all that fun out of us and it makes it more of a, ch a chore and a job. Yeah. So focus on batching set aside and this ties in perfectly with what Travis was saying. If you're blocking creator time in your schedule, block a little bit extra. So you could maybe get two episodes done instead of one. And now you're putting yourself ahead of the game and the further ahead you get with that scheduling, the easier it will be because now you've got episodes backing up. And if you end up having life happen to where you get bogged down with work or something that you weren't expecting comes along, you've got episodes in the can that you can pull from. So I love batching. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, you don't make one cookie. You make a whole thing of exactly. cookies. <laughs> yeah, who wants to live in a world where we get one cookie at a time? <laughs> and another thing you can do if you're in a position to do so is to outsource your content. Give your responsibilities to other people that may specialize in writing show notes or editing. If you have the capabilities and the funds to do that, go for it. If you want to keep it all in house, that works too. But outsourcing is always something that's available to you. If you want to take a little bit off your plate and free up more time for content creation, if you have the means, look at outsourcing. It's a great way to roll. Good advice. Great episode. I love this one, man. The lesson to take away. You absolutely have enough time. Stop making excuses. Get off the couch. Listen to the rest of this season because we got some good shit here. Then get back to podcast. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you have enough time to podcast? I think you do. It's all about managing expectations and managing your time properly and setting yourself up for success by timing out your podcast and all of the efforts that surround it to make sure that it's all taken care of properly, efficiently, and effectively. I know you can do it. Put your focus in the right place and you will be off and running. So up next, it's episode 129. Travis and I are going to debunk the myth of I don't have a million downloads. My podcast must suck. We know that's not right. We're going to talk all about it. So jump over to episode 129 and check out the next episode in season two of Pod Theory. I am Jason Sircone, officially closing the books on episode 128. Good talk. End of podcast. The importance of your podcast guest presentation cannot be overlooked. If you aren't doing your research, discovering why the show is a good fit, and presenting yourself in a way that will make you stand out as a quality, knowledgeable guest, you're wasting your time and will never get the ROI the podcasting platform is capable of delivering. To help you create a thorough guest presentation that will increase your chances of getting booked for your dream interview, you need to pick up my free guide, How to Build a Five-Star Podcast Guest Presentation. Learn more at jasoncircone.com slash five-star guide or click the link in the show notes to be connected to your free guide.